please enjoy this first episode with Holly that I actually recorded back in February of this year before she started her new role. It should be a really unique perspective around how a high quality individual went about finding their new job in 2020. I hope you enjoy it. be great to, I guess, introduce you to our audience. You are the inaugural person on our podcast, so uh, it'd be amazing if you could just give us, a, I guess, a quick background around where you've come from, what process you've been through recently, and, and I guess where you're heading as well. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you so much for having me on. It's an honor to be your first guest, Woody. Um, so yeah, my name is Holly Allen. I am a former G2 BDR um, and account executive. So I started out my sales career um, at G2, which is the leading business to business software review platform. I was there for around 18 months. Um, I did about 15 months of BDRing, which I absolutely loved. Um, and then I moved into an account executive role working with small to medium businesses there. Um, really enjoyed my time at G2, particularly the kind of SDR side. Um, now I have a new, really exciting adventure coming up. I am joining a company called SAS Leads, which is essentially a recruitment company for SDRs. Um, during my time at G2, I realized that my kind of real passion and what I absolutely love um, within the SaaS world is junior salespeople. Um, I think the SDR function is something that I love. Um, I'm an absolute cheerleader for, so this kind of felt like the appropriate next move for me. Yeah, amazing. So it's, a, it's a passion we share for young talent. Obviously, I spent 11 years doing Exactly that job working for, uh, you know, one of the biggest graduate recruitment companies in the country. And it can be incredibly rewarding. Um, it's also uh, quite a rapidly changing environment. So I don't know, um, back when you were a graduate, Holly, how did you kind of go about getting into industry in the past? Yeah, that's a, a really good question. I was very lucky um, in that my sister is Sophie Allen. She is the business development director at a recruitment company called Benetrix. Um, my sister and me are really, really close. We're very similar. Um, and she kind of really held my hand and guided me um, through the transition from you know graduate university to, okay, it's time to step into the real world um, and find myself a job. So before G2, I actually started out in recruitment. Um, um, so I was working in rec to rec at a company called SW6. Um, it's a tough gig. Pardon? Rec to rec, rec to rec is a tough gig. Yeah, I mean, it, it was tough, but to be completely honest, I absolutely loved it. Um, <laughs> I was a graduate myself um, and I was literally speaking to graduates all day, um, you know, calling them up, preparing them for interviews, um, holding their hand through the process. And I absolutely loved recruitment. Um, I think if it wasn't for COVID and a few kind of changes within the business, um, I, I'm pretty sure I probably would have stayed in recruitment. Um, but obviously with COVID and everything, you know, people, companies didn't want to hire anymore, let alone hire graduates so I decided that I wanted to move into a bit more of a kind of lucrative industry um, the tech space seemed like a safe bet at that point mm -hmm. so had another pep talk with my sister I was like look I love recruitment I definitely want to kind of stay within this realm and this world but I think I need something that's a bit more kind of stable for now you know wasn't sure what was going to happen with my job um, so she at Benetrix they run assessment days um, she put me on an assessment day for G2 um, and yeah it was kind of I, I fell in love with um, with the company uh, the former VP of EMEA there Henrique um, he was absolutely amazing I feel you know so lucky that I got the opportunity to work with him he's moved on now but kind of from my initial conversations with him I knew yes this is someone that I want to you know work alongside and really be inspired by throughout my time at G2. Yeah amazing so and look G2 amazing business we love them to bits uh, they've done a lot for us to be fair um, in, in terms of that there's a couple of things I'd just like to pick up on on what you've said there so one was uh, just how essentially your sister helped guide you through this process and, and get into your first kind of role within tech. And then secondly, um, you said there that Henrique, you know, you just kind of connected with him as an individual. So for, firstly, I think it would be really uh, interesting to kind of unpick, you know, that relationship with your sister obviously is great, but what was it about 
the sort of G2 brand, et cetera, that made her think, okay, well, Hollywood be right. And how did those two things kind of connect, do you think? Yeah, I think I definitely have the kind of right personality for sales. Um, I think she knew that I wanted to be in a very fast paced environment in a business that was certainly moving in the right direction. You know, G2 is an absolute rocket ship. Um, when I joined, there were like 10 of us um, in EMEA. And now I think there's like 40 plus. It, you know, it's, it's wow. a really, really exciting time to be a part of G2. Um, and I think in terms of Henrique, he was a very kind of compassionate leader. Um, I really felt throughout my interview, he wasn't just asking me the kind of standard, you know, scripted questions that a leader should ask when they're looking to, you know, recruit someone for their business. He was really kind of understanding my answers. He was listening to my background and picking up on things that I was kind of surprised that he would even pick up on, you know, asking me questions that are kind of outside the box, so to speak. Um, it felt more like a conversation. It felt more like he was taking the time to really understand me as a person and understand how I would work best, how he would get the best out of me as opposed to just, okay, are you going to kind of bring me in revenue or not? You know, that's how it felt yeah. um, on the calls. And I remember when I did get the offer from G2, um, my sister, their kind of protocol is um, Benetrix calls the candidate, tells them. So my sister phoned me and then Henrique actually rang me as well um, to have a conversation and to say, you know, why I'd been chosen, what he liked about the interview. And I just thought, you know, to kind of spend even those five minutes doing that really meant a lot to, you know, me, this girl stepping into SAS for the very first time, um, you know, that made a, a huge difference. Okay. So things about personal touch and trust and empathy in the kind of process, what, in, in terms of the selection process, what was the, uh, you know, before the interview with Enrique, what was the, uh, what was the other selection process? So you went through an assessment that you said, um, which I am very fond of. I, I've probably run mm -hmm. 500 of them uh, in my lifetime um, with group activities, etc. Uh, was there anything in between those two stages to, to kind of select you a little bit further? So it was the assessment day um, where, as I'm sure you're, you're aware, you're on a, a Zoom call with like 10 other candidates. Um, you introduce yourself um, so that the, the leaders um, on that call can kind of you know, hear a, a little bit about you. You have to say a fun fact, all that kind of thing. Um, then you split off into breakout groups um, so they can assess how you work as a team. From there, it was an interview with Henrique. Um, it was also an interview with um, one of the current SDRs at the time who was moving into an AE role, but had obviously done the job for um, just over a year. So knew what it meant to be a, a good SDR at G2. So he was on the interview as well. Um, I had to do, I've forgotten what they're called now, but it's like a kind of mental maths, kind of psychology yeah. test. I've, I've forgotten Psych what Psychometric. Called. Right. Yeah. The okay. wonders of a numerical uh, psychometric. I'm terrible at those because I'm dyslexic. So I, I literally get through three questions and that's it. I'm done. Yeah. Uh, even if I get I'm them right. Yeah, I mean, I'm not dyslexic, but I did definitely struggle with that. <laughs> Mum and dad might have had to help me <laughs> a little bit with those questions. Um, I'm not going to lie, as I'm sure many people's parents do. But so, yeah, so it was that um, I had to do like a role play and give like a kind of mock demo um, right. on the interview as well. Um, so, yeah, I think the whole process took around kind of three weeks from the initial yeah. conversation with Sophie to actually getting the offer. And that was in 2020, right? Yes. Okay. So fast forward a couple of years and uh, you've created, you know, an amazing personal brand. You progress through the business from SDR to AE. Um, you know, I, I would say from that sort of entry point, Holly, you've now become, you know, a well-known name, uh, to some extent at least, um, and definitely talent that people want to get in their business. So I'm really intrigued. How have you, what, what differences do you see between the kind of selection process and, you know, finding the opportunity that was going to be right for you in 2020 in a kind of a, a, a opportunity driven market right to now where actually you're kind of top talent in a talent driven market. What's the difference that you've seen? Yeah, I think, you know, when I started, to be completely honest, as many individuals do at the start of their sales career, I had 
no idea what I was getting myself into. I had no idea what, you know, a tech stack was, for example. I didn't really know the difference between inbound and outbound. Like I was a complete newbie. So, you know, for all I knew, it could have gone completely wrong. I could have started at G2 and gone, whoa, tech sales, you know, this this isn't for me. Um, and I think at that point, it was very much down to people like my sister, people like Henrique, the other SDRs at G2 to really kind of guide me um, because I was almost, you know, like a, a rabbit in the headlights. I didn't kind of really know, you know, what what I was what was expected of me or, you know, what that process would be. Um, I think being at G2 has taught me a lot. You know, obviously I've been really lucky in that I could grow my personal brand. Um, and I've learnt, you know, a great deal about sales, about being an SDR, about SaaS during my time at G2. And I think that put me in a much better position you know I'm a lot more educated on the market now I'm a lot more educated on you know kind of all things sales really as opposed to where I was when I very first started so that could really kind of help me to know okay where do I want to go next um you know what do I what do I really value in a business what is important to me as opposed to just I don't really know what I'm getting myself into um so I guess in a way you could say I was able to be a bit more kind of picky and choosy about where I wanted to go just because I do have, you know, that experience and that knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. So how, how did you, now that you've garnered that knowledge and experience, how did you kind of go out to the market and go, okay, these are the companies that I want to work for. And, and, you know, these are the ones that I'm going to focus my time on, which I think is the transition really now is because it's become talent driven is you can be a lot more picky, right. And you can actually take it down to, these are the companies I want to work for, as opposed to what opportunities are available at the moment. Yeah, I think, you know, it goes without saying, like, it's definitely a very scary process when you do think, okay, maybe I'm not as happy as I could be where I am. Maybe I do want to start exploring the market. And I remember when I first had those thoughts, I was a bit like, oh my gosh, I have no idea, you know, what, what to do or where to even begin. Yeah. Um, so the first thing I did was I had a chat with some of my friends in the industry, you know, other SDRs, other AEs, um, maybe people that had recently done a move from one company to another just to say like, hey, look, full transparency, I'm having a think about exploring other opportunities. What did you do? How did you go about it? Um, I think as well, you know, in sales, word of mouth and, you um, kind of all of that is a real thing. Once you have one conversation with someone, they might know someone who's looking for someone like you who could be perfect for that business. And it's almost like a domino effect. The conversations yeah. just start happening and coming. Um, so you definitely have to be proactive and really put the feelers out there. I think in terms of, you know, who I was looking to speak to um, and, you know, how I went about that, I literally just thought about my strengths and weaknesses and what makes me happy. So, in my current role or in my previous role at G2, what was it that got me really excited? What did I enjoy the most during the week? What activities didn't I really enjoy the most? What were things that I really loved about G2? What things did I not like as much about G2? And I think from there, that can really help you make an informed decision on who you should be having conversations with. Um, you know, for me, social selling, my brand, that is the thing that really gets me out of bed every morning. That's the thing that I absolutely love to do. Um, and also junior salespeople, they're people that I feel very passionately about. So I kind of put the two and two together and I thought, okay, what roles can I explore where those two passions um, will, you know, really align? Awesome. So that's really good advice for, for a candidate, I guess, in terms of, you know, speak to people and, and get their insights and, you know, write out what you've loved about your job and, and basically try and create that opportunity for yourself, really. And that's, you know, testament to your sales capability. What, what advice would you actually give to an organization? So how on earth is an employer brand? Um, meant to tap into that kind of, you know, I'm an amazing candidate and I want to create the job that, that I want. How does the, how do they even begin to think about creating that brand that's going to engage with somebody like yourself? I'd say there are two main things. Um, and this is what I felt like SAS Leads did really, really well with me and is, you know, a big part, well, the reason why I've kind of chosen to, to go and work with them. But I'd say the first is really understanding what that candidate is excited about, you know, what is going to get them out of bed every morning and what is going to ensure that they are delivering 
the best that they possibly can because you know essentially if your candidate if your employee employer is happy then you're going to be happy because you're bringing in the most revenue and you've got a team that is motivated and you know wants to show up and come to work every day um i felt you know with my new manager chris he really tapped into what are you excited about what do you want to come and do here at sas leads and we can almost build a role around that for you um so that was something I really liked. And then the second thing I think is timing um, and pace. You know, obviously in sales, there's that saying, t saying time kills deals. Um, and I think that's really true in the recruitment process as well. Um, from my initial kind of reach out to, to Will Koning at SAS Leads, I was on the phone with Chris, the hiring manager for this particular role um, within two hours. Um, nice. And you know it kind of all moved very very quickly um the follow-ups after the interviews and the conversations were very quick um and it was like they were just constantly communicating with me getting me excited um so yeah i'd say they're the kind of two most important things yeah amazing so it sounds like you know putting it all together you've got your kind of network effect so you've got to treat your employers employees amazingly so that they become your your you know your advocates for the future because you never know who's going to ask the question what the, what is it like to work at xyz secondly you've then got yeah you've got to um you know have a a sort of a malleable process that is really quite quick at the moment i mean if you're if you're too slow right now you're just missing talent left right and center um out of interest what what interviews did they do if any, like, did they do any of the kind of wonderful assessment centers, role plays, etc., or was it simply interview based this time around? So I think for me, it was a slightly different situation in that I know Will Koning, one of the founders at, um, at SAS Leads, well. Um, I've met him at a few networking events and, and whatnot. We're kind of friends. Um, so I guess I probably didn't go through the kind of typical, um, you know, unusual, more kind of formal interview process. Um, I think maybe we had like two or three Zoom calls um, and, and that was it really. And that was... It felt very conversational. Um, it felt quite um, relaxed almost, but really exciting at the same time. It was kind of like, how can we, rather than how can you come and work for us, it was like, how can we work together and build something amazing that's gonna you know, really help accelerate the business and our business goals, but is also gonna ensure that you're happy and you're doing a role that really fulfills you um, and excites you. Amazing, it always comes back to that, always be recruiting and you know networking and making friends and all of that stuff especially in the sales environment if you're not doing it again it's it it's just sacrilege uh, just the same as if as you're a startup you should always be funding as a startup you should always be recruiting and, and you know making those connections for the future um, going slightly off topic I guess but um, I guess just questions that I'd like to ask really. What's the what's the worst interview experience that you've had and equally what's the best? Oh, good. You don't have to give yeah. specifics. You don't have to be really <laughs> dishy, but um I mean <laughs> To be completely honest, I love interviews. Like I <laughs> absolutely love them. I love the interview process. I really enjoy kind of when, um, you know, an interviewer asks you a question and it really puts you on your toes and it's like, oh, I didn't quite expect that. I, I don't know. I find it quite exciting. Um, I wouldn't say I've ever had a terrible interview process. I'd say um, something that like for me really puts me off and I know for other candidates is a kind of super lengthy process because if you you know have a call or an interview and you come off it and you feel great and then you don't hear from you know the the company the leader whoever for like a week two weeks then it makes you feel a bit rubbish because you think oh I thought that went really well but maybe it, it didn't maybe they don't like me maybe there's someone better so I think you know following up is is so so important um mm. I would say the best interview process that I've had has to be with with SAS leads. Um, it just felt 
after every conversation that I had with them, I came off the call feeling really excited. I felt like we were very aligned. I felt like these are people I'm really going to get on with, not only professionally, but personally as well. And I think that's so important. Important, You know, if you're a candidate and you are looking for a new role, if you're not coming off that call feeling excited and feeling like, oh my goodness, I can't wait to work for this business and you're getting all these ideas and momentum, then, you know, it's probably not the right opportunity. Yeah, I totally agree. You, as a candidate, you're not you're not getting a job. You're hiring a boss. Don't forget mm. that. You know, it's there's there's no great advice that anybody's ever given me than uh, don't look at the business, look at the boss, because eighty percent of people leave their their boss, not not the business actually, um, and therefore that connection. And I think you can you can from a hiring perspective, as a hiring manager, you can really feel when something is conversational but challenging and that person is relishing the challenge and actually that spurs on even more conversation in an interview and it's not a grilling you're not putting them under you know undue pressure it's just an amazing kind of sparring exercise do you think um however the the sort of interview world needs to change i personally you know I think the idea of sitting somebody in front of three people for a lot of jobs, sales probably is a bit different actually, but for a lot of people sitting in front of three people to become a, you know, a developer, a software tech person, having an interview with a panel, it doesn't really have much correlation to whether they're going to be a great developer or not. So it'd be interesting to know, you know, moving back into recruitment, how do you think that process is going to evolve? Yeah, that's a, a really good question. Something that we are trialing at SAS Leads um, is rather than companies seeing the candidates first, we are literally just understanding, you know, what it is that they're looking for in a candidate, what skills, what values, what's important to them. And before they've even spoken to the candidate, we are placing that candidate into a role with them. We're saying, you know, trust us, trust our judgment. Um, this candidate is going to be a, a really good fit for you. And I think, you know, the reason why I think that's, you know, really, really great. And as I say, we're, we're trialing it, but I think there is a lot of um, unconscious bias in sales. Um, I think it's something that is improving, but I know, you know, two years ago, even if you didn't have a degree from a Russell Group University, if you weren't from a kind of, you know, middle to upper class background, I think all of those things, you know, race, gender, um, sexuality, I think all of those things really play a, a big part. Um, and so I think that what we're doing by saying, look, let's kind of rule out any of that bias, let's make that not even possible for you. Um, and let's just look at skills and values that will really align um, is a, a kind of much, much better way to do it. Yeah, it's a big leap of faith. But, you know, the, uh, the, the reality is, if you've done your due diligence as a business, and you're putting your credibility behind that, that should give people the confidence that those individuals are going to be right. And uh, I totally agree in terms of unconscious bias. And, and, you know, it's becoming more conscious, unconscious bias, and people need to keep challenging it and being made aware of it. Um, and doing things like like what you're doing and and you know to the point where yes we're a video interview um organization but actually we're talking about how can we remove visual bias so um actually blanking out the screen so you can't see the candidate at all and just listening to their voice and their answers and their competencies mm -hmm. as a stage before then taking them to the next stage so i do think that that whole challenge is uh, you know especially to engage with social mobility um, is gonna is gonna really change the way people are interviewing over the next sort of two to three years and and open up a lot more talent streams you know if we're talent poor at the moment why not find talent where you're not looking uh, mm -hmm. and especially where nobody else is looking at the moment so that social mobility thing and actually going into those pockets of society that have been underserved is going to massively benefit your business uh, in terms of growth um, so. Thanks, Holly. Just to finish off, um, uh, I think we've probably got enough for the client side of things, the interviewee side of things. But if you had to give like three top tips to candidates now, what would those three tips be when they're trying to find a job in 2022? My three top tips would be don't rush into a role. When you get your first job offer, don't just go for it because it's your first one. 
really take your time to look at what's out there, explore the market and find an opportunity that's right for you. My second one would be um, look at previous, if say it's an SDR role you're stepping into, look at other SDRs in the company and see have they done well, have they received good training because the chances are you will probably follow on a similar path. Um, and my third tip would be think about what makes you happy and really think before you join a business, am I gonna feel happy waking up every morning, doing this job, working for this manager and working at this company? I couldn't agree more with that last one. If you're not happy, don't do it. You know, yeah. um, it's the eighty twenty rule. If you love eighty percent of your job and you hate twenty percent of it, you're probably in a good place. Um, but but yeah, make sure you're being happy. So thanks very much, Holly. It's been amazing speaking to you, and uh, I'm sure we'll speak again in the not too distant future. <laughs>